welcome to my channel. This is Nina from the Forgotten Bookshop Girl and today I wanted to show you how you can make these little uh, paper pinwheels from book pages. It's a really really simple and uh, quick thing to do and I think these look really really cute and it might also be something you could add to your Christmas tree or just have them as part of your advent calendar or just attach them to presents or just um, hang them in the window. I'm sure you can think of lots of ways of how you can use these and uh, this is actually my favorite size. It's the small pinwheel and um, then there's the bigger one so a pinwheel basically kind of folds out like this and then you can hang it up and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make uh, the bigger pinwheel um, the way of making them is the same but I just thought making a bigger pinwheel would be um, easier to see uh, on the video. You know, these are definitely my favourite pinwheels and obviously you can make bigger ones but I quite like this size. I know some people have really big ones but let's just stick with this size. So first of all, let's put this one to one side. First of all uh, you are going to need some book pages. This is just um, uh, an old paperback book that I've taken apart and uh, that seems to be a really nice size for for this um, size pinwheel and for the smaller one I just used half a page so let's just grab one sheet of paper And then the next thing we're going to do, we're going to fold it, and it's kind of a concertina fold, I think that's what you call it. So you start um, at the long side of your page and fold it over. Try and make sure that your fold, that you, if you line up um, the edge on this side and on the other side, you should get a nice uh, straight line and also your fold is going to be hopefully kind of the same width on this end as it is on this one. Um, just trying to think of how how wide it is. Uh, it's about, uh, it's a bit more than um, a centimetre, I would say a centimetre and um, so like 1.2 or 1.3 centimetres. That's um, what I've been working with. Obviously you could make them wider but they seem to be quite, quite good. And then I turn it round and then my next fold um, and for my next fold, I'm going to line up the next fold I'm going to make with this edge of the paper so that I can make sure that all my folds are going to be the same width. Don't worry if it's not 100%, but try and make sure that um, you know, they are as, as equal as possible. And then you just carry on folding it. If you've got a bone folder, you can use your bone folder to uh, make sure that you've got nice creases. And I find it um, the easiest to fold if um, I hold it this way around so I can actually see how I'm lining up the paper. And as you can see, this isn't 100%, um, but 
but I'm fine with that. Right, so we've got our paper folded. And now I'll get my scissors. And then I'll just cut some patterns into the paper. Um, I'm just going with very simple uh, like little triangles because they're just really easy to cut into the paper. And I'm sure you can, um, you know, find some really fancy patterns. But I thought I wanted this to be an easy and quick uh, little craft thing you can do. And then I've tried, I've tried to, to have a pattern of two uh, triangles and then something that is supposed to be like a kind of like a, a rounded shape but I feel it looks like a misshapen triangle. But to also make sure that you don't cut too far into the paper because then um, that kind of just destabilizes your paper and then when you fold it out um, you, you might have kind of like big holes in it. Let's just carry on. And then I just turn it round and I do the same thing on the other side. Again, I'm just doing my little triangles. like a half circle thing. It's really dark and gloomy day outside. We've even got weather warnings. But that's to do with uh, flooding mainly. But I just hope yeah, it's perfect for being indoors and uh, crafting but I just hope that there is enough light to fill up. We go we've got one done and um, just be prepared that you will have little bits of paper everywhere in your home afterwards and for the big one we will need four of these and um, I've got some prepared um, but the what we hang on I'll just get them so we've got We've got four of them, and then next, you know, just grab one of them and fold it in half, and like that, lining it up nicely. And then you are going to glue, put uh, your, and then you're going to put some glue on this fold and glue it together. I'll just grab my. Uh, because I, that's my favourite kind of glue, glue stick. But obviously you can use any glue that you like for your craft projects. Let's put it on both sides. And then line up two edges and press them together. And then you do the same thing with the uh, three other um, strips of paper. So, I fold it up and then glue them together. And then next we are going to start putting the four parts all together that's in the end you can see how uh, the pinwheel gets its shape from the four equally sized parts so we'll start gluing those together and you do it really in the same way as you um, glued the two parts of your uh, folded book page together 
and um, kind of usually what I try and do but I'm not too fussy about it. You can see that this last bit of paper is kind of sticking up and this one is sticking, um, the end is, is kind of like facing down. Um, so I'm gluing these two parts together. If I was really organized I would make sure that I would be able to do kind of to, to glue all the four parts together like that um, but you know in the long run the pinwheel still works and you won't really look that closely to notice um, how you've glued them together it's just if you do this you get a really nice uh, neat kind of like a very neat finish okay I'm just trying to be you know I'm just trying to make sure that I don't pull uh, the, the, the parts um, apart that I've just glued together. Normally I would wait for them to dry first. Okay, let's get this one. Oh, yep. So here we go. We've got our pinwheel almost done. Um, and then the next thing you would do is uh, just get some, you know, a piece of twine or some um, some thread. I use some really nice gold thread uh, for this one to hang it up. And then maybe let's just do that. Get get the gold thread, which you probably can't see at all, but it's here. Did tie a knot um, in the end I, because I just thought maybe that would give it a bit more grip, and I uh, glue it between the two halves. I think uh, a hot glue gun would be really good for the next step. But I haven't got one um, because the next step is kind of gluing your string onto one side and then gluing these two together and then you've got your string in between you can hang it up. However I've been thinking what if I wanted to keep some of these for next year and it would be really difficult to um, uh, to pack them away like that because they might squash so I thought it would be really good if I could kind of fold them out again and then just store them like this. So I thought how about adding a little bit of, um, of cardstock on either side um, just to give it a bit more stability. And then I'm just thinking, okay so this is a bit of an experiment so bear with me, I'll have to see. Okay, so I've got uh, just just got some uh, just cut two strips of cardstock, which I'm going to attach here. You see that this is a bit too long, so I need to cut a little bit off at the end. have my bit of string there. Um, I'm just thinking maybe I could attach the string with my stapler. So hang on, I'll just grab my stapler. Okay, stapler is here. Um, right, just, just bear with me. What I'll do stick some glue on this side. it out first before making this video but I always think it's quite nice to just you know sometimes see how people try and how people people 
just see how you know you can work on solutions or just um, you know, watch people <laughs> fail miserably. I don't know. Okay, so I've attached it on this side. I'll do the same on the other side. And I've decided that I might. Um, I'm going to use a stapler, but I wanted to. Oops. I want to staple it um, not only to the book page, but also to the bit of card. If that makes any sense, just so that it has, you know, the whole thing has a bit more stability. So let's try that first. Obviously, yeah, I, I could really wait for it all to dry, but do I have the patience for that right now? No. Nope. Okay. Grab my bit of thread. Um, just like that. Staple it on. Oh gosh, I'm the right thing. And then, of course, I've run out of staples. Back. Let's try this again. Right, and line it all up. I'm trying not to squish everything. Well, that kind of worked. And up here. And maybe another one. Up there. Yeah, I think that, that should, should work. Okay. The thing is, however, now I still you know, I, I still need the um, these two bits to stick together. So I thought maybe a paper clip could do the job. I'm sure there are ways to do it, and all I need to do is look it up. But I haven't, so it might be these really clever hooks that keep everything together. Okay, because obviously now you can see the paper clip there. Right. Okay. It works. It kind of works. Oops. There. I realised I only caught one part of the one part of the thread when I stapled it on, but this would work if you wanted to be able to um, oops, kind of like keep these for next year. Just take out the little paper clip and then you could maybe kind of tie a little ribbon around them or put them in a box and put them next to each other so they keep like this. So there we go. Just um, to let you know for the little ones, I, um, as I said before, I use the same book page, but you are only going to use, or you only need, um, uh, but basically you only need one book page to uh, create one of these little ones. So this is half of a book page and this is the other half of the book page. And then you um, do the same thing. You fold this up in, in half and glue it together as I've done with this one. And then you attach it in the same way and then you get the uh, little the little pinwheel, so that's just one book page. 
and that works really well. Or really you could also do something like, uh, I know lots of people like to have a circle in the middle, so I thought you could maybe just get some scrap paper. circle and again a hot glue gun would probably work quite well and then you could have that in the middle and I find these colours work really nicely with um, with, with the uh, with the book pages and you could have you could have those in the middle actually that does look quite cute but then I don't think you could open it so you would have this would have to be one where you can glue these two ends together. Just thinking about storage, you could obviously have one box where you just stack them one on top of the other if you wanted to keep them. That should work and keep them safe. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. I know I'm going to make a lot more of these and um, probably hang them in, in the window. And I uh, Hope I got you inspired to make some of these. You could also use obviously coloured paper and gift wrap paper and magazine pages, but I really like the simple or the simplicity of the book pages. Okay, I hope you all have a lovely day and I'll see you soon. Bye!